Hey guys, welcome back for another video. Today I've got my top 10 tips and tricks to improve virtually any setup, whether you're in a living room like I am here or have a dedicated home theater space if you're lucky enough to have that in your home. These things are almost, if not free. And these are all things that I've learned and done here myself. Let's get into it. Now let's start with the elephant in the room. I totally get that your TV is too high, people. But just remember this, everything is relative. We prefer to watch in a reclined position, always. And as such, having a reclined position and having the TV a little vertical lines up beautifully. Your neck has no strain. Your eyes are looking straight forward. But yes, absolutely, if you watch in an upright position or you're in a couch or anything like that where you're not reclined, of course you don't want your TV up so high. Drop it down as low as you can go. Luckily, we're reclined, so we're completely happy with this. However, it's not just dealing with a TV that's up high. You have to tilt it. You have to get that angle to match where it's going down to meet your neck and your eyes. That's the key. The other really cool thing with the tilt is it kills reflections that are in the background. If this TV was just mounted flat on the wall, and it was pointing straight out, obviously a couple feet above where it should be if you're down here, you would see reflections of lamps and lights and all kinds of stuff. But having it tilted down, it's just reflecting straight back and there's nothing here. It's you. I don't even see this light if it's on when I'm down here watching TV. There's nothing to reflect in the screen. So that really helps things. So the big tip here is, if you've got your TV up mounted high, make sure you're tilting. Maybe you have to get a new mount, but it's completely worth it. And I'll throw this kind of related freebie tip in here. If you do want to mount your TV up higher, it frees up the ability to put in any size center speaker you want. This guy is a full-sized, huge center speaker. I got big hands. This sucker weighs something like 45 pounds, and it's full range. It's rear side ported. That's important. Make sure you don't just put a normal rear ported on because you would be blocking the airspace. But this has side vents for the rear port, so it actually blows out all around and you can mount it almost all the way up to the wall. And if you'll notice, it looks like it's just floating. I used microwave oven mounts. Totally cheap, very durable. It's meant to handle a lot more weight than a center speaker. I'll put links down below to this. This thing, I think it was like, I don't know, 15 bucks, something like that. Again, totally worth it for a super slick, clean look. Now here's one of my secret weapons in the home theater. This is black felt, super cheap. You can get a couple yards of this for about 10 bucks. I happen to get it at one of my local Walmarts, which still has a fabrics uh, section. You can go to Joanne Fabrics if you got one around you. You can get it on Amazon. I'll try to find an online link for a good deal and put it down below. But this kind of stuff soaks up the light. Now, I'm in direct light here in my dining room. So it's really blasting it. And the camera is making it look a lot brighter than it is. When this is in normal, indirect light, it goes completely black. It just sucks up the light. And this is great for hiding things. And I'll show you examples in a moment here. Do not make the mistake of substituting things like this. My wife made the mistake. I told her because she wanted to do some projects and uh, use some of this, and I didn't have enough full bolts. So she went and got this black fleece. Looks really similar, right? Actually feels pretty similar. The difference is in the versatility. Yes, you can, act, you can use this as a fabric, however, the felt has one really big advantage. Velcro sticks to it. So you can use little self-adhesive Velcro pads and stick this stuff just about anywhere. And it comes off very easily. Whereas you get a softer material, which feels nice and looks about the same. Nothing. There's nothing for the Velcro to grab onto. So black felt is what you want. One really awesome thing you can use it for is just covering up little tiny details or defects or gaps or just not calling attention to things like this gap that would have been here behind the TV and it's a ridiculously thin OLED. 
but I didn't want to see the gap and see the back of the TV and the mount and wires and all that kind of good stuff. And again, the camera is making it look a lot brighter than it is in here. Let me turn off this light real quick. It just soaks up the light. And especially when it's dark in here, you don't see squat. Here's direct light coming in from the door and you can see it just doesn't reflect. I also have a little tiny bit of it down here just covering up some wires that I've got going over the mantle here for that sub and that speaker. And I've got one for the center coming up and an ethernet and all that kind of good stuff. So it just fills it in. And when you're back here actually sitting, you don't even notice it. it just looks like part of the TV. So if you don't have your spacing perfect, maybe you can't lower your mount wherever exactly you need it, it just fills it in for pennies. And this kind of stuff just hides all the details. So it covers all the wires and all the stuff back here. I've got battery backup, I got the mount. And all I did is put little self-adhesive Velcro squares on. You just tuck it in where you need it and it stays put. Going along with that, there are self-adhesive felt strips and I'll put a link down below to what I used here. But let's say you've got something reflective like a freaking logo right in the middle of your center speaker. You may not have seen it until right now I'm pointing it out, but there's a big old chrome logo right there. And again, this side light is really highlighting it and the camera is exposing really up so you can kind of see through the grill there. But to the eye, you can't see any of that detail. And this just disappears when it's not normal light. But usually it looked just like this, the big old Chrome logo. Well, I sure as heck don't want to see that right below my TV when I've gone through the trouble of removing distractions. So this little guy, I just got a sheet, cut it out, stuck it on there, blends in with the grill. Again, when you're sitting down, you can't even see it for pennies. You could also use that on speakers or in top of cabinets or on top of TV stands, whatever you want to make non-reflective, super cheap and easy to do. Again, just use little Velcro strips, cut out little self-adhesive squares and cut the felt to where you need it. You could eliminate the glare from any kind of equipment. You could even do it over speakers or subs. Maybe you don't like the finish of something you've got. It doesn't match other stuff. Make yourself a felt cover. Now here's a couple things that made a really big visual difference. Alexa, turn on the media cabinet. So I built this rack and I've got all my gear in it, but I'm the type that doesn't like distractions. I don't want RGB lights. I don't want toys. I don't want all my grills off to see all the drivers. When I'm watching something, I like the room black or as black as possible. And I just want to see the movie. That's it. What I do, however, want to see is my main display on my processor but not to be distracting. Everything else in there, I don't want to know is on. It doesn't matter. So what I did, because everything has freaking lights on it, power displays and all kinds of different accent lights and all that stuff, I used blackout stickers and I tinted my door. This door in the rack did not come blacked out like this. This is limo tint. It came just regular glass. And what I did is when I was assembling the unit, I just took the raw door, took it up to my local car tint shop. I brought my phone and I just put the phone behind some various samples they had on the wall to figure out what I wanted. The limo tint looked the way I wanted it to and had them tint this door. It cost me about 20 bucks and then put it back on. In combination with blacking out everything that I wanted to, I didn't need to do the main display here. It has a high and a low setting and on low, with the tint, it's dim enough where I can just barely read it, but it never distracts my eye. So that came out perfectly. But everything else, I put these little blackout strips on. Now it's a combination of basically pre-cut sized and shaped tint stickers. Some are like this, it's like a limo tint, and you can double them up to make it twice as dark. Some are completely black. So it's just basically little black plastic, you know, flexible stickers. But I put them on all my things that light up. This has a big one on it, a big circular one. That was a really bright blue light there on my monolith amp. I put them on all the power and status lights for my power blocks there and the power switches. You couldn't even see those with the door closed. All my uh, streaming boxes and server, any light that was visible, 
I just noticed. Oh, no. I thought that NVIDIA light was on, but it's actually the RGB is just kind of glowing the plastic in the case. So anything that was still visible, even through the tint, put those stickers on, and you're golden. Again, for absolute pennies. I'll put the link down for that below. All right, here's something for the audio lovers out there. This will especially affect two-channel listening for music. However, it has a big impact on home theater, also multi-channel sound. A lot of people think that you don't need a perfect speaker setup for multi-channel sound because, well, most of it's coming out the center anyway, and you're not really getting stereo coming out. And to an extent, that's true. I mean, most of your dialogue, of course, is coming out the center and a lot of effects and everything. However... Many effects in movies, especially Atmos and DTSX, object-based type mixes, have objects that are panning, especially back and forth on the front. And having your front stage mains set up as perfectly as possible makes a huge difference. I have a video where I showed the physical placement of my particular two speakers in here, and it's following a system called Master Set. It's totally free. It's just labor. It's going through the motions of physically placing your speakers. And of course, there are a bunch of other videos that have, uh, great people have done also out there on YouTube that tell you how to position your speakers. Whatever you want to follow, putting in a little bit of effort and making sure that your actual physical speakers are placed as well as possible before you do any kind of calibration definitely pays off and it's completely free. It's just your time and knowledge. Now this next tip is both for people that are using traditional speaker setups and sound bars because this applies to center channel speakers just as much as sound bars. Now, if you're placing your speaker or sound bar on a cabinet, if you're not wall mounting it, if it's sitting on something, make sure that the front of your sound bar or center is at the front edge of whatever you're placing it on. I see too many people. In fact, a professional installer just installed my buddy's Sonos system, which he's very happy with, by the way. But he put the arc at the back, way up underneath the TV, instead of at the front. So I told him to absolutely get that changed, and he's doing so right now. But what that's going to do for you, whether it's a center channel or a sound bar, is give you noticeably better dialogue quality. It's going to be a lot more clear and it's going, to, it's going to have less echo and distortion because you're not going to have the reflection off that hard surface and it's just going to be the front baffle and the speakers going into your room, which is the way it's supposed to be. A very simple change. Make sure you've got your center and sound bar placed correctly. Totally free. This next tip is a good one. However, like many of us, we're not going to be able to do it. But just know that this is something you should look into. And that's making sure your main listening position, wherever you're sitting, should be optimized just as much as your speakers. Because the sound that you're perceiving in wherever you're sitting is a combination of where your speakers are and where you are. Both are equal in how your room is interacting and shaping the sound. This is not ideal, absolutely not ideal. However, in my one seat with everything I have in here, everything I have tuned, I have great results in that one seat. The other seats, not so much, <laughs> and I never will because they're just not possible to have great results in. But that one, I've this whole room is tuned around that one position. <laughs> <laughs> it took a lot to get it. Luckily, this whole room is just for me. My wife loves to watch stuff with me. She'll sit here, but she's still on her freaking phone flipping through TikTok for half a movie. So she's not into it like I am. And everybody else we have over, they really couldn't care less. They're just, you know, watching and enjoying whatever they're, whatever we're seeing. They're not home theater nerds like me and like you probably are watching this. But if that seat was a few feet out into the room, it would be even better, and I wouldn't have had to spend so much time and money getting everything to work around that poor position. And more seats would be better. If this whole row was a good three feet out, I mean, that would be so much easier to calibrate and set up, but they're not. But just know that if possible, moving your 
seating position to a different position may give you much better results. So experiment with that if you can, totally free. Here's a big one. Use what you have. Use what you've already paid for. So many people have not run calibration. I don't care if you've got the most basic 15-year-old Yamaha Waipau or you've got the brand new Dirac Art or you've got anything in between. Run your calibration. It's going to improve your sound. It will improve your imaging. It will improve your bass response. It will improve your dialogue quality. It will improve the experience on all audio levels for free. If you have Odyssey and you have the option of upgrading yours and using the app, it's like 20 bucks, get it. It is worth every penny. It, 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 20 bucks is nothing compared to the effect that it's gonna give you. Do your calibration. You're leaving performance on the table. Here's something that I enjoy doing just for fun, but it can also give you a little bit better performance if you're starting with something older crappy to begin with, but it can also make your significant other very happy and tidy things up. I made these custom cables wherever they were showing in the room, which is basically just around this mantelpiece here. I got everything I needed to hide them. Again, if I was showing you this in person, you wouldn't know it until I pointed it out. You can see them on the floor there if you look down between the sub and everything, but looking up the side, you don't know they're there. Got some snaking around the corner there because I can roll this out at any time. Got them coming down the side there. They disappear. I specifically got white so that I could do that. On the ends, I've made them look prettier. Again, just for looks. But you can put custom wraps on. If you want to make things black, for example, and really blend in, I've got the ends here wrapped in black. So they look nice just sitting on the floor and they go to white before they hit over there. Just think about it and figure out if you can make what you've got blend in better to your home aesthetic and you might make somebody else a little bit happier. And it really is fun making your own cables. I'll put a link down below to one of my videos showing you what I did for at least one of these batches and you can think about doing it yourself. This last tip, it's only gonna work for some people but you might be in this situation. Maybe you've got these large, and may not look it in this video, but these are very large, heavy speakers. They're about 120 pounds each. Very tall, almost five feet tall, solid as a rock. My wife was not crazy about them in here. Now, there are many speakers that are a lot bigger than that. But I've had to acclimate her over the years and over many upgrades. I started with really tiny things. I mean, think both cubes, right? And we've grown to this. So it took years. But if you've got great subs, or even in a smaller room, just really good subs, you don't need, in many cases, full-size speakers. You can get small bookshelves, as long as they play great above your crossover point, and you're primarily concerned about movies and TV shows, it makes zero freaking difference. These are great for playing in two channel, playing full range. But in home theater, they're crossed over at 90 hertz. Just happens to be where they work best with these subs in this room. They play a lot lower than that, but the crossover in this situation works best at 90. The Most of the cabinet, most of the point of having them full-size speakers is completely wasted. That's a simple fact. I could go with the bookshelf version of these and have identical sound. If I just had little bookshelves and little stands or put them on something, it would be identical sound. So maybe that's an option. Maybe if your significant other is telling you to downsize, don't downsize the center, but you can certainly downsize your mains as long as you have the subs to supplement them. Just think about that. Anyway, those are my tips of the day. Hopefully, you can make some easy improvements in your home theater and get yourself some better performance. That's it. See you next time.